flyweight division, the former USBA champ, uh, I don't know how many time uh, amateur champion and quite a fighter, and he's here with us, Johnny Tapia. You want to switch over to Johnny? <laughs> and thanks for joining us, John. Yeah, thank you very much for welcoming us to your home. All right, and we also have his manager, Paul Chavez, with us. Hi, Danny. Thanks, Paul. Okay, and so we're going to ask uh, Johnny a few questions, and let's ask you about the Viasana Ruiz fight. Uh, was, was he pretty tough? He was a real tough fighter. Uh, knowing that what kind of caliber fighter he was, he's very tough. He was a Mexican champion. Yeah. All I went out for is just go for a victory. I never predict the knockout or nothing. I've never been that kind of fighter. Mm -hmm. But uh, I give him a lot of credit. He stood his ground. We fought to a good fight. Yeah, he did look like he, he was a pretty rugged guy. I think he was scheduled to be Danny Romero's opponent that night, and, and you ended up fighting him. Pretty tough guy, though, wasn't he? Yeah, he was scheduled to fight Danny, but I don't know what happened between them. But they asked me if I would fight him, and I said, sure. It was, well, it was a good fight and a good performance. It proved that you're back all the way. And now you get a chance at the WBO world title here in Albuquerque at the pit. That's October 12th, in the pit, the world title. No TV in, in Albuquerque, but uh, it's going to be a good fight. Henry Martinez, uh, your opponent, what do you know about Henry? Well, first I'd like to say uh, I'd like to give top rank uh, the opportunity of giving me the world title. You know, that was a very, very, it was very, very, how can I say this? It, it really got me excited because mm -hmm. they picked me for the world title and they put me as number one. Uh, I give Henry a lot of respect out of the ring, but in the ring I don't respect nobody. It's something they're going for that I want. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm glad I got the first opportunity to fight for it. And it's a dream come true in my hometown. Right, that's going to be an exciting night of boxing. You can't miss it. Danny Romero, Sean McClain on the card. It's going to be on national TV. going to be a heck of a night here in Albuquerque. Uh, that'll be a big night. And uh, you know, John, I got to say, you seem a lot more relaxed now than you did you know, years, a couple years ago when I saw you before, you seemed uptight and everything. You seem like a whole, a whole different person, much more relaxed now. Are you fe feeling good as far as your personal life? Yeah, things things are looking real good. My personal life is going good. Uh, me and my wife are very well set. Um, I give a lot of thanks to my manager, Paul. He's brought me a long way, you know. Right. And uh, I'm just looking forward to being a world champion and being a bigger and better person after this. Right, it's going to be a heck can't wait. And uh, the WBO world title, I mean, uh, you, you won an NABF title, didn't you? Not too long ago. Yeah, and, and now you fight for the world, the world title. Is that a, kind of a surprise? Did that, that catch you off guard, or were you expecting that? Well, can you believe that I'm fighting for two titles in one year within three months? And uh, it's, it's a big opportunity for me, top rank. I've been with them since I first started. Mm -hmm. They have helped me out a lot. Uh, give a lot of thanks to Bruce and Bob Barham for giving me the opportunity for fighting for the WBO. And I'm just looking forward to this fight. I'm in real great shape. Got a lot of different movements going on. Because Henry comes in with his head, I got to watch his head and not get no headbutts. Yeah, he's, he's a real bull. And let's uh, ask your, your trainer, your manager, Paul. Um, is Johnny training any different? Is he doing anything different for this fight? Oh yes, we've uh, we got a game plan and we've been working on it. And because uh, Johnny is in for one of the toughest fights of his life, I that's mean, what I hear. Yeah, this kid is 19 and zero, and uh, uh, I think it's 10, 11 knockouts. He's a very tough fighter, but uh, Johnny's going to be well prepared. In fact, right now, right this minute, we still have a week and a half to go. He's weighing 116, 116 and a half, mm -hmm. and. Uh, he feels very confident. I mean, uh, we're in a position where all, every fighter in the world would love to be fighting for a world title. Right. And uh, Johnny's very well deserved of this, cause, and he's well prepared because he has fought uh, uh, some of the better fighters out there. In fact, uh, one of the fighters that he fought and beat in Phoenix is a world champion right now. It's uh, John Michael Johnson. Right. He KO'd Junior Jones from back east, mm -hmm. and Johnny beat him. Mm -hmm. And you, then you have Jesus Chong, I mean, right. world, uh, class. world class fighter. Absolutely. So Johnny is well, very well prepared for this fight and uh, we've been working on a few different movements and trying to get him to use his jab a little bit more and be more patient instead of, if when he first come, came back, he came back uh, wanting to knock everybody out and I said, that's not your style of fighter, uh, fighting, I mean, let's, let's go back to your old style of, of boxing, moving. And this is what he's doing now, and 
I don't think there's anyone out there at 115 pounds that can uh, beat Johnny and Johnny in good condition mm -hmm. if he fights. Oh. Okay, I want to ask Johnny, uh, uh, are you a boxing fan? I mean, do you just like to watch fights or do you really not pay attention to it? Yeah, I'm a boxing fan. Uh, who, who are some of your favorite fighters? Julio Cesar Chavez, Sugar Ray Leonard. I like the style of Sugar Ray Robinson, a, punch, a puncher and a boxer. Right, kind of like your style. Uh, my manager, Paul, predicts me as a Sugar Ray Robinson, but I want to be a Johnny Topter style, you know? I, 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 come with some, I come up with some things that people don't even do, but like I say, uh, I'm really focused for this fight. I've never been so serious for a fight. And uh, I have to ask you, this is a question that all boxing fans in New Mexico <clears throat> are really interested in. Uh, Danny Romero, the tremendous fighter, and uh, he just now moved into the 115 pound division, and there's been talk for quite a while that you and he might might meet sometime. I mean, is, is there a possibility that we might see that fight? Well, you know, I don't got nothing bad to say about the Romeros. Their group, they're a very good group of people. Uh, I fought with them in the amateurs. And uh, Danny can't make 112 no more. He says uh, he might go up to 118, 115. Right now, I focus on the fighters that I have to fight. And if people really want to know if me and Danny are ever going to fight, all time will tell. And if it does, I guess we'll meet. I guess it's kind of like the like the, the thing with Canizales. I mean, if if they offer it to you, then you consider it, you know. But uh, but you wouldn't turn it down though. If, if it if it came up, if the money was right, and you know the situation was right, uh, you would consider that fight then. Well, first of all, I like to say with my manager, I go with him first. Mm -hmm. But we have never turned down no fighter. Champion or not champion, I fought every champion, Mexican champion, Kulia Khan, uh, Mexicali, I fought all the champions and, and I've proven myself and if Paul thinks that we can beat him, well then we'll go for it. But I want money's right in this ball game, that's what we're in for. Mm -hmm. You know, but also beating such a great fighter like that would be a big opportunity for me to reach bigger and better. But like right now, I'm focusing on Henry Martinez, and my manager says after this fight, let's go fight him, because he has right. all the faith in me, and he's the only one who knows how I fight. So right. We'll go for it. Uh, I've seen a guy with a lot of jewelry and a mohawk in your corner a while back there, <laughs> Mr. T. I mean, how did you hook up with Mr. T, man? We were uh, having a big press conference at the sports bar in California, Almonte. Sa Santa Monica. Santa Monica, and uh, I, I kept on looking at this guy and. And I went and I asked him for an autograph. You know, we all got local, we got heroes, you know, that we look up to. And I started talking to him and he started talking to me. And we started getting along very good. And I asked him, he told me that his dad was a preacher. Mm -hmm. And I told him that I was getting, having a big fight that night. I said, you think that me and you can kneel down and pray? And he said, sure. And once that hit it off, uh, I asked him to be in my corner. And he went and asked my manager. My manager said, well, sure, you know. <laughs> so. And I want to thank uh, Johnny Tapia and Paul Chavez for joining us here on the 8 Count Boxing Hour. It's a real pleasure. Two of the finest gentlemen. They've always been real good to, to me and all the fans of Albuquerque. I thank you guys both for your time. Thank, thank you, you for having us, Danny. I appreciate it. And next time, if ever you need us, we'll be here. Well, I, I, want, I want you to come over again. And next time, I want you to bring that world title belt. I want to see it up close. Can you do that? To have a beautiful belt to come in a beautiful home, we'll be here. Okay, thanks a lot, man. Johnny Tapia.